Hello, fellow artist. This is Linda Riddle, and it's a good time for art. Today, we'll be exploring new ways to make prints. In our last class, we made relief prints by taking everyday objects that we found around the house, like this, dipping them into paint, and pressing them onto paper. Today we'll use a different technique for doing relief prints. But before we get started, I'd like to talk to you for a minute about how art makes us feel. For me, making art makes me feel calm and excited at the same time. I think it makes me feel calm because I'm so focused on what I'm doing that all my worries seem to just float away. And it makes me feel excited because I love the process of exploration that goes along with making art. It's like having an adventure right here at my kitchen table. Looking at art can also have an impact on how we feel. Let me show you what I mean. Everyone knows the feeling of being afraid. The Norwegian artist Edward Munch expressed that feeling very effectively in this painting called The Scream. The startled expression on the person's face and the swirling colors of the landscape convey the sensations we feel when something scares us. This painting is so famous and the emotion it expresses is so familiar that it actually has its own emoji. The American artist, Mary Cassatt, created a very different atmosphere in her work. She often painted mothers and children. Looking at her paintings, you might have a calm, cozy feeling, like you have when you're safe at home. Here are two paintings by Pablo Picasso that express the feeling of sadness. The facial expressions and the hunched position of the figures shows what sadness feels like. The abundance of blue in these paintings adds to the somber mood. Now I'm going to introduce you to an artist whose work always makes me feel happy. Yayoi Kusama is a Japanese artist who has been creating art her entire life. As a child she loved making art. Here is a drawing of her mother she made when she was 10 years old. You might notice that there are dots scattered all over the drawing. This is a theme she is still exploring 80 years later. She is especially admired for the installations she makes for museums and art galleries. Often she uses mirrors to create the illusion of infinity. Sometimes she uses lights with mirrors to create her infinity rooms. Pumpkins are a favorite subject for Yayoi Kusama. She often uses pumpkin sculptures covered with polka dots for her installations. Other organic shapes show up in her work, like these tentacles covered with dots of various sizes. Yayoi Kusama has said, Our Earth is only one polka dot among a million stars in the cosmos. Speaking of polka dots, today we're going to do some relief printing with bubble wrap. If you thought the only fun thing to do with bubble wrap was pop the bubbles, I've got some good news for you. This makes the most beautiful prints. And just like our other relief prints, the part that we'll be printing is the part on the surface. All these little nooks and crannies that are recessed will not print. The way I found this easiest to do this is to take my bubble wrap and tape it down to something sturdy, like a piece of cardboard or a tray or even um, in my classroom where we had formica tables, I would sometimes just tape the bubble wrap 
directly to the table and toss it out at the end of the day. Okay, now first thing I'm gonna do is just cover these bubbles with paint. I found this shimmery purple metallic paint in my garage a few minutes ago, so that was a stroke of good luck. Now I just take a piece of paper, lay it right on top, I press down and then I just start rubbing to make sure that the paint transfers onto the paper. And there you have it. Fantastic print. Sometimes I like to do more than one print with one application of paint. So let me see what would happen with this second one here. Maybe it'll be great and maybe it won't. It's definitely different. And one thing I do notice is that the places that had just a little bit of paint left, you can really see a lot more of the texture of the bubbles, which is kind of beautiful. I have discovered that bubble wrap seems to come in at least three sizes, maybe more, but the three are the number of sizes I've found. So let me just work with this middle size bubble wrap right here. Maybe I'll try to make a little bit of a line pattern. That worked. experiment around it might be fun to see what happens if I start mixing some of these colors up a little bit more so let's try that Ooh, that one came out much softer I think it's really interesting it's so much fun to experiment with colors on these. Sometimes after you've been doing a lot of prints, you'll end up with some really soft, interesting, almost grayish kind of colors as the, as the different colors blend together. Now, I have to try this little, I don't know how well you can see, but this is a teeny tiny little bubble wrap here. So I think I'm gonna to have to be careful not to just blob the paint on here or I'm gonna lose the, lose the pattern. I think I'd like to try here is layering some smaller bubbles on top of a print that I made earlier that's dried and see what happens. I have no idea. It may look great and it may be a giant flop. Maybe I'll just do part of it. I'm happy with the way that came out. So that's a whole other thing you can experiment with. Here are a few examples of my bubble wrap relief prints. The colors can be painted in distinct shapes like this one, or blended to make softer colors. Even just using one color of paint 
can make a fascinating print because of the gradation of color from dark to light and the intricate patterns that are created by the printmaking process. It's fun to try printmaking on different colors of background paper to see what kind of effect that will have on the final result. Overlapping different sizes of bubble wrap prints is another thing you can try. You might even want to explore combining bubble wrap printing with the stamping technique that we did in our last class. You can make gigantic prints if you have large paper and a big piece of bubble wrap. I use some of my large prints to make this fun gift wrap. Thank you so much for joining me today. One thing you might want to do is think about how you can use your art to make other people happy. My friend Van, who's five years old, recently dropped this colorful print at my front door. He also brought me this amazing sculpture that he had made. Believe me, it made me feel very happy. Some other children in my neighborhood have been hanging their art in the front windows of their house so people can see it as they walk by. It's a great way to cheer up the neighborhood. You can also share your art with all of us at hashtag GoodTimeForArt. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and remember to subscribe to my YouTube channel. That's it for today, but remember, it's always a good time for art. 